the Strengthening Networks for Greater Impact Stitch is a project that kicked off in 2019 in Nairobi, Kenya. It is an initiative that was and is being implemented by FEMNET, the African Women's Development and Communications Network, in partnership with Oxfam. 13 partners from seven countries were privileged to be implementing partners. These countries were Kenya, Ethiopia, Rwanda, Mauritius, Mali, Tunisia, and DRC. The main objective of this initiative was to strengthen the institutional and operational capacities of women network organizations for coordinated actions at global, regional, and national levels. In this production, we look at Kenya, whose partners are the Association of Media Women in Kenya, AMWIC, and the Young Women's Leadership Institute, Wiley. AMWIC, that is a network of women in media, works to increase gender-responsive media coverage, reporting and raising public awareness on the Maputo Protocol and Agenda 2030 for sustainable development across the Kenya media sector. Young Women's Leadership Institute, Wiley, is a network of young women professionals who work to improve capacities of young people and dissemination of information on existing policies on sexual reproductive health and rights. Three things that came out of what, of what we did. The first one was in the institutional capacity where uh, we were supported uh, on our meal strategy, uh, having a new strategic plan 2021-2026. Uh, we also did our constitution, the board governance uh, manual. And uh, out of doing all this work, it really helped us and we looked at the need of us rebranding as Amwik. And as right now, you are aware we did a, a launch Amwik is 40 years right now, um, and we did a launch with now all these new documents that really uh, have helped us to strategize on the new ways of uh, how we carry out our activities. That was the first one. And the second one was uh, policy influencing. Uh, specifically, our project was in sexual harassment. Now, you are aware that uh, Women in News did a research in 2021, and they found out that Kenya, unfortunately, is the leading uh, Kenyan media is leading in sexual harassment in Africa and that really took us by surprise and we saw the need of finding ways on how to address this issue. Now, the third area that we also focused on was on uh, men to men engagement. Now you realize uh, addressing issues affecting women, you cannot be able to independently fight them as women. You need to bring in men. You, meet, you need to un make them understand that these issues, it's not about women, it, but it's about the society. It's about you working hard to ensure that the economic value of the organization stands. Because you can imagine a media house that where women do not operate. Because you realize that most women are actually exiting the media spaces because they are suffering psychologically, because they have been sexually harassed, and they have not even had a way of coming out. You know, they, the reporting mechanism most times in the media houses do not work. And you realize that even most of the positions are held by men who take advantage of the women. So what we have done is we have brought these men on board. We've uh, explained to them what sexual harassment entails and how can they support us? How can they be our ambassadors in spreading these messages into their media organizations and specifically targeting their fellow men? Under institutional capacity strengthening, we were able to review um, some of our policies, including the finance manual, uh, the governance policy, we were also able to be in a process of um, developing and even thinking of our safeguarding policy, uh, which I believe as part of the process we'll be able to have a document at the end of it. We've also had an opportunity to strategically think of how YWLI will look like in the next five years through a strategic planning process, So, which, is, which was quite interesting for us because it's been um, a dream come true, like having a document that uh, shows our vision as young feminists. Uh, under, under 
uh, activities we did a campaign, a major campaign on ending violence against women with a specific emphasis on femicide. Uh, so femicide which is also perpetrated through intimate partner uh, violence. So we were linking that campaign with also policies that protect women from violence. Um, the reason why we are linking it to policy is because we want to see change in terms of our government protecting us, but also justice for our sisters who've died through femicide. The, the challenges were political will. So when we say connecting a campaign to policy, it means you need political goodwill. They are the change makers. For us, we influence the change. We connect our campaign to certain items within the policies that are in place, but also uh, push for review to strengthen certain, uh, certain policies that protect women. For instance, the Sexual uh, Offences Act. We have the policy on ending viol uh, domestic violence that was provided by NGEC. Um, and we don't see such policies being implemented uh, at county or national level. It, at times it just depends on, it depends on case by case. But most of the cases really take too long to get justice. So um, we really struggle in bringing the policy makers to the table to have conversations to, with them, especially when you do not have funding. They really demand a lot of money for one sitting, and at times they just come for five, uh, uh, let's say two hours. So you have to be strategic, yes, but then most of the time they don't come to the table with us. Yeah, one of the greatest challenge that we have faced is resistance from men. We can't say that it has been easy for us convincing them uh, that sexual harassment is, is, is you know, it's a vice. Uh, to them, they've just taken it as normal. They even take it as their right. And so telling somebody that you must stop sexually harassing these young ones, they take offense. So it's really taken us quite a lot of time to try to convince them. But thankfully, uh, most of them were convinced. Of course, there are those that uh, they still feel, no, 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 no. You cannot you know, enter into my space and tell me what to do. But quite a number, we can say, uh, we can gladly say that at least 70% at least of those that we have reached, they were convinced. And now most of them have become our ambassadors in spreading um, uh, this gospel of sexual harassment, addressing sexual harassment. Another challenge that we have faced, of course, is uh, limited funding. We are not able to reach out to as many media stations as possible as we would have wished. Remember, Kenya, the, 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 the community media is really spreading out in the country, and those are the areas that we really wanted to target. But now, because of you know limited funding, we are not able to reach out to those stations. It's really been our wish to reach out to them, but uh, we are hopeful that we'll get more support uh, from different partners, both locally and internationally, so that we are able to reach out to them. Because we really, really want to end uh, sexual harassment in the media spaces. One thing I want to mention is that um, uh, AMWIC has been mandated by the Kenya Media Sector Working Group, which is the overall body overseeing all the, uh, uh, all the activities of the media industry in Kenya to lead the gender committee. And so we took that um, and we decided to escalate the issue of sexual harassment to them. And we convened two meetings. Uh, the first meeting was with policy influencers in media houses. That includes um, media stakeholders in, uh, and also the editors, the station managers, and trying to explain to them what sexual harassment entails and how can we work in partnership so that we are able to, uh, to, to, to address this issue. And they were very supportive. I uh, want to really thank them. They were very supportive and out of the forum we were able to form a subcommittee uh, to try and find ways on how can we address this issue. And the subcommittee has gone ahead and we have laid work plan, a work plan on how we can create awareness, how we can do outreach programs to be able you know, to reach out at least in every media station and try to uh, create awareness on this thing. And I really want to thank the committee because they've really worked hard and so far what we have as an achievement is we have been able to come up with a model policy 
uh, that we are going to roll out to all media houses uh, to ensure that uh, it helps them in addressing sexual harassment. One of the achievements was providing spaces and mobilizing young activists and um, influencers to be part of the, of the, uh, of the campaign. Um, and this strategy was to ensure that our voices are amplified. This is a struggle that YWLI could not make it by themselves. But then we appreciate the kind of support that we were able to mobilize through our networks and the different expertise uh, in ensuring that we had the media present where we had over 20 um, radio stations, including TV stations, where we had interviews as well as uh, presented our statements as young feminists and were um, and were presented to the public as well, but also I believe they got to the policy makers that we were calling into action on uh, certain uh, demands from the young uh, feminist petition to the government. Um, another uh, achievement was how we've grown in terms of partnerships and uh, We've had, through the visibility of the campaign, we've had uh, new partners coming on board, including uh, donors who are interested to fund the continued uh, work under My Dear Body campaign. Uh, we also have partners who've come on board to build our capacities on doing that kind of work we do in terms of connecting it to campaign and policy advocacy. So we have the... Um, campaign accelerator where we are part of uh, the challenging patriarchy program uh, and also the lancet commission where we are part of uh, a, a program that is amplifying uh, women's voices young women's voices on advocating on sexual and reproductive health rights of young women among other uh, partners who've come on board through the campaign One of the greatest lessons that we have learned that any, um, any issue that we are trying to address uh, as women, any women agenda without involving men is futile. It is futile. You will not go anywhere without involving men. And involving men means making them understand why is this so important to us, not as women, but as the general or community, as the country, what is the economic value, what is the psychosocial value, what is, you know, the physical value, and, you know, generally, why is this important? And if we do not make them understand, they will feel like we are fighting them. That is why you always realize that there's a lot of retali uh, retaliation because men feel that we are fighting them when we are telling them that, that we want to address I issues of... Uh, uh, gender parities. We are not fighting men, but we are just want them to complement and accept that women are equally, um, they, they are equally qualified to take up some positions, they are equally uh, qualified to hold various positions either in the media spaces or even outside, even in the political arena or any other decision making uh, level. Women are equally qualified and we must not encourage at all times the patriarchal system. We must realize that gender balance is very key in the development of any community. So that is really important for us and that is why we have learned that it's really important to include men in addressing issues affecting women. If we don't make them understand, they will always resist. Action. Um, we've received lots of solidarity and um, through our networks and as well as partners who've joined us on board. Uh, as I said at first, this work is not an easy task, so you can't do it alone, especially during COVID-19 because the project started in 2019 and we didn't oversee that we could have like a total lockdown uh, in 2020 and 2021, partly 2021. So we capitalized on the networks that we had.